Hello there, Sir from 17 once again. This is my Yakuza 3 no damage boss gameplay. The first boss here is Majima Goro. That was a tiger drop, which is nowhere near as much of a win button in this game as it was in the games that follow this. And we're going to be going through each of the bosses that are fun in this game systematically and trying to no damage them. That was the Kamaki Parry, which is like a tiger drop, only he does the grab instead, and that is way safer as an option here. We've got him down to low life, so if we hit him, it's going to put us into a feel the heat moment. And then I get to mash the right trigger on a PlayStation 3 controller until I get my heat up, which is not very fun to do, and I don't know why this exists, because it's not great. And I'm happy to say that they fixed it in Yakuza 4, because it's way better there. But then we get to do... Am I doing Hell's Floor to this guy, really, when he's got no life? Wow, I must have been really in a bad mood. So... <laughs> This is an interesting product, Jake, this one, guys. It's on hard, because Extra Hard has no checkpoints. Uh, I would have potentially been able to do this on Extra Hard if it did have checkpoints. Uh, these videos would just be probably twice the length of time, because the damage that you do on Extra Hard is reduced quite a lot. The heat damage still does quite good damage, but for the most, the fights are way longer. But here is the second guy. Uh, he's about to become your friend, but before he can become your friend, he has to become your enemy. So I start off immediately by using my heat and then going into a standard combo where I chuck him down and I get some heat back. I'm being very aggressive here and I'm using the block. So blocking in Yakuza is hit and miss. There are certain moves that will break your guard and you have to re-guard. There are certain moves that will low kick you and just do damage through your guard. And then there are things that will be blocked. And as you can see right now, I'm using this effectively to, to neutralize the fact that this guy is very quick. He has lots of combos, and he's very random, so I decided to, you know, mess around with the block. The shortcomings of the guarding in this game is you cannot move on your guard, which is kind of a standard of most games, but it's also directional. So, if they get to your side and you're blocking away from them, and they hit you, they will go through your guard. You have to face them when you guard, or it will not guard. And it's an interesting idea, but it comes off as a little bit archaic in these days, so you don't see many people use the guard too much in Yakuza. I used it against him because he kept clipping me, and it was frustrating, so alas, uh, some intelligent use of guarding. And it got us the no damage. And now we have Tetsuo, who's a dirty bastard who throws knives. So I'm going to put on a Muramasa blade, which is an incredibly strong sword, and I'm going to proceed to damage him as quickly as I can to get him into his second state. His second state's easy, because he's got knuckle dusters, and he does a very generic pattern that's easy to kamaki parry. But this point here, I got tagged so many times just trying to dodge his first attack and then combo him from behind. So I was just like, I can either put the gloves on that let me block knives or edged weapons, or I can put on another weapon and expediate the beginning. So that's exactly what we're going to do here, folks. One of the things about Yakuza 3 is that the bosses have a lot... Each boss has more life than the one before him, and doing damage on this game takes a long time, especially on extra hard, which is... A blessing that we're not there, I guess. But it's the heat actions. If you do a heat action in this game, it'll do, like, 20% of a person's bar. Maybe less sometimes. If you do a heat action on Yakuza 4, it does 75%. You do a heat action on Yakuza 5, it does, like, 90%. The, the way that they've upped the heat damage is ridiculous in the later games. But at the same time, it means that they're way more effective and more affecting. Because on this game, you're going to see me do a lot of moves repeatedly because they just don't do that much damage. And personally, I think they should have maybe gone for a middle distance where it wasn't quite as neutered and effeminate as it is here, but it's not quite the nuclear bombs that they are later on in the series. Uh, I think they, they definitely needed a middle ground, but here is me putting the weapon away. When you do that, you are completely immobile and it's terrifying. Another thing you've got to be aware of on this game is the camera is horrible. The camera will fight you every step of the way. It's a nightmare, and even locking on, like I'm doing right now, where you go into the fighting stance, can be awkward, because this game is... This was the first time the Yakuza games were made for the PlayStation 3, I think, and it was the first use of this newer engine, this, this modified engine, so they were just kind of working out the kinks, and it leads to a, a lot of awkward moments, so... Most of these videos were me fighting the controls than they were fighting any of the bosses. Uh, which is unfortunate, but it's still a great game. And the bosses have these moments too. 
Every so often a boss will have a series of quick time events they want you to participate in. And depending on who the boss is will depend on how effective they are, because I really disagree with doing this and then getting no benefit. Like, I didn't do any damage to him through that, it seems, and I didn't get any payoff at the end. Instead, it put me in no man's land, and I had to immediately run a direction, and I nearly got hit. I, th I just think it doesn't reward the player at all. Some of them do, too. Just most of them don't. There is uh, another Kamaki Parry into a, a quick punch, and here comes the Hell Floor to finish him off. Another area I think this game could have perhaps benefited from more animations. It would be great to have more of these finishers. Maybe an, a, an exclusive finisher for each boss would have been a cool idea. But let's talk some mechanics, because this is a pretty long video and you're going to see me using a lot of techniques. The bosses in this game are kind of simple to manipulate. Uh, depending on what pattern they have, Mine has a vastly different pattern to most of the bosses here, and so does Majima, because they're counter-fighting patterns, and you have to play them in a very particular way to get them to do what you want. Everybody else is kind of predictable. The only time where they're not predictable is when they're in heat. Heat is an absolute nightmare. So this fight is an absolute nightmare as well. Uh, this is very reminiscent of a fight that was in Yakuza Kiwami, if you played that one. Uh, only this is way more difficult because it's Yakuza 3, and Yakuza 3 is arguably the hardest modern Yakuza. Uh, Yakuza 1 and 2, not too bad. Yakuza 3, very taxing. So, you have a group of people, you have two friends, and then you have the boss. Uh, the boss is the main threat here, the friends are just assholes, and if they pick anything up, that's when things get scary. Because they can throw what they pick up, and they're really good at throwing it too. So my advice for this beginning sequence is to neutralise as many people as you can if you want to. You can do the running into a crowd of four people, press triangle and get rid of people. Or you can bring a knife and do the running knife attack, which has the really quick X command at the end. I did plenty of that, and I kept fucking up. So on the victory run here where I kill the boss, uh, it's going to be quite an aggressive one against uh, Mr. Ha is it Hasabe? Ha Hasibe? I don't know how to pronounce Japanese names, I apologise. But what I didn't realise is just how long this fight was, because when you get this guy down to half-life, he goes into heat mode. And heat mode on the bosses in this game is when things stop obeying the rules of the game. And that's when things get really dangerous. So I had a couple of really good runs where I got rid of all the crowd, and it was just me and the boss. And then he hit me with his sword, because he pulls a sword as well. I experimented with putting on the gauntlets, I experimented with using weapons myself, and I decided to, to do a pretty dirty strategy, which is consistent and generally risk-free. But once again, there is aspects of this game that don't work very well. These are aspects that have been improved in later games, but still don't work as well as they need to. And the first one is grab detection. A lot of bosses can be grabbed in Yakuza. The grab is incredibly powerful because if you throw people, you're invincible. When you're grappling them, you're not. The moment you start to throw, you cannot be damaged, but you come out of the animation quite quickly. So if they hit you right as you come out of it, you will take a hit. But for the most, the best strategy to deal with crowds is to chain grab them, just like in God of War. Because you'll haul iframes, you'll knock people down, and you'll build incredible amounts of heat. And having heat is powerful because you can do heat actions. Uh, this is him going into heat mode, by the way. So, you're going to see me go into my menu, you're going to see me equip the gauntlets that allow me to block knives, and all I'm going to do is stand in front of this guy. He's going to do his attacks, it's going to kill the frame rate, and then I'm going to grab him, and I'm going to smack his head against the floor. Because it's a red heat command, does good damage, and he's going to give me all the heat I need by attacking, and I'm going to do it again. It is not honourable, it's not that great to watch, but it's effective, and fuck this fight. Because if you get touched at any point, it's back to the beginning, killing all the men and killing this dude as well. And it's an absolute goddamn nightmare. And I had crashes on this fight as well. Never even seen my PlayStation 3 crash. Didn't even know it could. But it did. Obviously, because I'm just unlucky that way. Uh, but here is a move that's incredibly powerful on Yakuza 2. Not as powerful here. I remember that ruining the final boss on, on Yakuza 2. But not here. Additionally, folks, when you're fighting with a grapple with people like this, if they beat you, it's mandatory damage. Or unless they break the grapple. If they break the grapple, you're fine, but they usually counter really quickly. Some bosses have an auto counter to grabs, so don't even bother. Uh, that's just a nightmare. Mine has one, and so does uh, Fuma, I think he's called. The guy who looks like Seto Kaiba's dad. 
So we're just going to keep hitting him into the ground, getting that finish, chasing that finish. Those two people over there are going to finish off the lackeys for us. And then we're going to hopefully get... Oh, additionally, you can also do that as well. But I didn't realise you could on this game because there's no prompt and I forgot you could. You can, I think, press circle to do the other spin. But uh, that dude's a dickhead. And this guy's a dickhead too. So this is one of the worst fights in the sequence in this video. Because it's very aggressive. The boss man is super, super angry all the time. He's always coming for you, way more so than any other boss in the game. And he's got buddies with him. And if you make a mistake, you'll notice my life is full, so I'm not even getting the bonus damage to having low life or anything. Because my life is full, I have to wait 20 minutes for these people to kill me to retry. So instead, I saved at the bottom of the, the Camarocho, and I quit to the title, reload, run all the way back, skip the cutscene and start the fight. So, as you can imagine, this was a fight that wasn't going to be in, in this series because I was getting really fucked off at how long it took me to get back to it. Because I didn't realise you could eat the worms and lower your HP. Uh, but a big shout out to, I think he's called Leon Rick, who's got some Yakuza no damage videos. He's a great Yakuza player. And I asked him a question, how he got low life for this fight, because there are no battles active. You cannot do a single battle to lower your HP before this, because Camarocho's all blocked off by police. And he said, if you go back to the orphanage, you can get a worm, and it will enable you to do this uh, where your sanity's intact. And you might wonder, uh, Chris, why do you need low life for this? And it's just so that when I make a mistake, I can immediately retry, as opposed to waiting 40 minutes for the enemies to kill me, because the damage on this game is, is like babies. It doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. And the strategy here couldn't be simpler. It's essentially, wait for him to charge attack you, dash around him, and then do a full combo on his back into bounding him against the wall. And if you can do that, you can do good damage and put him down. And it's, it's, it's a simple fight, but the simple fights sometimes are the most annoying ones. As we feel the heat and, and we put him down. Additionally, you have to kill the people too after the boss. So if you get hit on the people, you'll have to reset the full fight, which I thought is frustrating as fuck. Luckily enough, I, I should have got slapped, but I didn't. And you're going to see it, because what I tried to do is I tried to do the rolling. Uh, I think it's called like the tumbler, the, the, the da Dalma tumbler or something. All you do, lock onto an enemy, roll towards them and press triangle and you do the flying sumo headbutt into the kick in the head. And I tried to do it to get rid of one of the bad people and I don't think I had it. So I suppose we'll, we'll see. So I grab this guy, that gets me heat, watch it's gonna happen here. I tried to do a heat action on the ground but I think he was dead. That's it, see that? That was an attempt at a heat move that never happened. There's him locking onto thin air because the game's detection is questionable. And there is a kill of the mysterious figure guy. So he goes down. I drank some alcohol before this because you get access to two heat moves. One of them when you're locked on, one of them when you're not locked on, I think. And they can add to the damage if you need to use them. But I, I ended up not using them. And then we have Suyoshi Kanda. This was a hard one, this. Because I just, I didn't realise you could use a heat move to get rid of the big plates he pulls off the walls. So I ended up doing it the hard way. And this fella's got a lot of life. So it takes a while. On extra hard, this guy just goes for days. But when he picks up a weapon when he's in heat move, he has two moves he can do. He has a slower one hit like that, and he has a triple combo. I bait the third hit on the triple, and I Kamaki parry him into bounding in against the wall, into a dash attack to th further bound him, into a heat action. But I missed it just then. So we're going to do it again. I'm going to bait the swing, and I'm going to punish the third hit of it, because I know the timing. Uh, this is just the red heat when you do Kamaki parry. Here's a quandary for you Yakuza players. Why is it that Ultimate Essence is a unique stun attack on enemies, yet it doesn't work after using Kamaki Parry? You have to stun them. And stunning in this game is really awkward to do and barely ever happens unless it's you. I find that baffling. And the move looks really cool as well, yet you can't access it outside of doing that like stepping back kick bullshit. Really frustrating. But right now, walk up to him and press triangle when he swings. You will do a counter move that completely gets rid of the plate. It's the same thing you do to those fat dudes with the sofas that block the uh, stairwells. But I didn't realise you could do it, so instead, I'm going to do heat actions against him, and then I'm going to throw obstacles at him until he drops it, and then you can combo him. But I didn't trust the, the, the stun state. I didn't realise you can do like two to three combos when he's stunned. 
I thought he was going to recover and instantly punch me because I was scared and I didn't want to reset. So I only do one uh, one move and then I go and pick up a chair when I could have done two to three combos there and really hurt this man. But instead, uh, I do the old punch in the gut and put him down. And then he's going to be back to heat mode picking up a chair. Oh no, he's going to be picking up something off the uh, wall again. When I was replaying this, for some reason, I thought he was going to fall. He was going to try and pull that one out, and it was going to fall on him. So there'd be a bit of a, a humour to it. But instead, there's just that ridiculous ending, which is really funny. But there's the, the chair. There's the tumbler to try and do some quick damage. Then we're going to get out of his way. All of this, once again, is me making it way harder than it needed to be. But by God, is it my method of beating him, at least. <laughs> Space him, chucking chairs. Like a true bitch. <laughs> there it is, nice stunned. And this should get us to the... I'm definitely going to do Hell's Floor against this bitch. Because he's got so much life and I wanted him dead. This was the point where I was like, this is going to start getting really difficult. Because this guy just kept hitting me and I couldn't see the Matrix. And then the moment you see it, it's just a case of getting the good execution. And then it takes, you know, like 10 to 30 minutes and you'll get it. And it was the same with Fuma. At first I didn't understand what I was meant to do with him because I just couldn't predict his pattern. And then as soon as you kind of get it and you start learning it, it becomes a, a case of just doing it. And then I had it in 15 minutes. Mine was the same, but he took way longer because Mine is a fucking cheater, man. The, um, oh, this looks ridiculous. So here we go with the utterly stupid moment, which is wonderful. He does the king throw as well from Tekken. Which is probably a wrestling move, hence why King does it. But I don't know the name of it. Some kind of torture rack or something. Looks horrible. Lovely sound effects as well. But one of the things I don't like about Yakuza 3 is when you attack certain bosses from behind, unless you get perfect connection and perfect detection, they turn around and guard before you're able to fully take advantage of their vulnerability. And I think that's bullshit. And an even worse culprit is if they go into heat while you're punching them. Well, they'll just use a heat move and fuck you up like an auto counter. It's a nightmare. Uh, but this is good old Majima. Way smaller environment this time. And he's got a couple of new tricks and he's got a shit ton more life. So I do some simple comboing into the ground punches and I'm going to bait his moves. And whenever he does a move that I know is slow enough for me to get behind him and punish, look at that. That was a perfect bound right there because we got the double combo. Here is the combo to Kamaki Parry. Get behind him or throw him into the ground. You can generally grab um, Majima from behind whenever he's stunned. And you can do some of the unique heat actions here like hitting him against the cage, which is really good. That's a dangerous move. Whenever he goes into heat, He's going to charge at you, so if you charge a cigarette by pressing the D-pad, when he starts rushing towards you, if you press triangle at the precise moment, you can interrupt his and move doing this, and you can do the, the cigarette heat action. Unfortunately, on the victory one that you'll see here, I fucked it up twice. But in my practice attempts, I did it, and it looks really cool. Because when Majima goes into heat mode, he gets super evasive and really aggressive. But if you stare at him, he just permis dashes. That's all he does. He dashes around like a psychopath so you can completely time him out and then exploit the fact that he's going to rush at you to get a heat action. You know, which is a, a cool strategy, but it's difficult to time. And it'd be cool if you could just mash it, but then you'll end up doing that really stupid kick that, that Kazuma does when you fail a tiger drop. And I'm trying it again. So there's the cigarette ready. If you look up in the top right, you'll see it. It's only there for a flicker. Watch for the heat symbol. He's just spamming it, isn't he? Spamming it. Come on, dickhead. Do the thing. What a bitch. Oh, I, don't, I didn't even see it that time, so maybe that time it was even sparser. You might have to be straight on with him, but it works because I've done it, and it's cool as shit. But we're getting him quite low, we know his pattern, we're not worried. The only thing that he can really hurt us with now is if he does something really fast and I don't react, or if he goes into heat and does something I don't expect. But he does the jump, I bound him, we get the bounce, I get the double hit, I get a second- Oh my goodness, that is that is as good as it gets, as far as damage. And for some insane reason, they've removed that from later Yakuza games. They made it so that the bounding and the bouncing is nowhere near as arcadey and nowhere near as fun. So in Yakuza 4, getting people to bounce so that you can combo them again into walls is really awkward to do and it barely works. Yakuza 5 is kind of the same but I think it works a little bit better. 
This is the game that did it the best. I think they should have kept it, because in my opinion, it's high level play. If you understand how to reset people against walls and force them to stand to get an extra combo against the wall, you know more about the game than the average Yakuza player, and that should be something you strive to do because it's max damage, it's combo efficiency, and it's not in it anymore, and I really miss it. So I'm hoping with the new physics engine in Yakuza 6 that it's going to, to be in that, but from what I played, it isn't. The physics are really weird. And now we have Lao Ka Long, who... This is the part of the game where the bosses start to get a bit shit, I think. This is a horrible fight. He has low hits with the staff that go through your block, he has incredible range, he has really fast swipes, and then when he goes into heat mode he becomes an even bigger bitch, so... This entire fight is going to be one big shame fest, because I couldn't get him to do what I wanted him to do. I couldn't get any good combos, I couldn't get any good kamaki parries, it all felt too risky, and the fight was far too long. So instead... I'm going to grab him and throw him and then do heat moves. It's crappy, it's cheesy, but it works. And uh, it's the best I could do because it was getting really frustrating. Like right now, if the tiger drop was working and it was good, you could just tiger drop him when he does the running attack. I've done it a million times on later games, but I can't in this game because it doesn't work. I've done it to a million arena people, but it doesn't work the same so you can't do it. Additionally, you might be thinking, Chris, why aren't you hitting him from behind and doing the big bounding combo? Well, this motherfucker turns around and kicks you, for no reason. And there are times when your punches miss and he kicks you. So, the amount of times I comboed this guy's back and he auto-recovered and hit me, made me not even do it. So instead I'm going to try and grab him. And the grabbing works on this run, but it doesn't always work. Sometimes he can break your guard and do a really fast swipe and it's the end of the fight. He's a bitch. Everything about this fight is shit, I don't like it at all. Uh, so that's why you're seeing it being played like this and at the end it gets even cheaper because he pulls the claws And if this was just him with the claws you could learn the claws moveset and you could come parry it and it'd be fine But because it's got all the stick and all the other bullshit I'm not risking a, a, a tight parry once I've done all this fighting because I don't want to reset on a boss I don't enjoy the boss after this guy I would have gladly reset all day Mine I would have gladly reset all day because those fights are fun and the fair this motherfucker autocorrect kicking me for no reason, doing all kinds of weird shit, I'm just not down for that. So instead, I'm going to run around until my heat goes up and then I'm going to hit him with bottles. Because that's what men do, right? We're Yakuza. And I like this fight. I like this boss in its idea. I like the claw moveset. I think that's cool. I just completely hate the stick. The stick is just bullshit. And you fight this guy in Yakuza 1 and he's a much better fight there. But of course, in Yakuza Kiwami, you have a Tiger Drop that gives you invincibility when you do it, so you can just molest them with Tiger Drop. Tiger Drop in this game has to be spaced and timed perfectly or you trade. Which leads me to something that needs to be discussed. Technically, if you have no life in your bar, when you're on 1 HP and you have heat, your character will not take damage. Instead, your heat will be damaged, so you can use your heat to keep yourself alive. And if we're going to be pedantic, you don't technically take damage because you have an ability that supersedes that. So you could get hit in these runs and it would not void no damage. But I don't think that that's very fair to the challenge. I think it's kind of shitty. And as much as I don't really enjoy boring you in this fight and doing what I'm doing, I'm not getting hit. And it's abiding to the rules that I've set in a fight that I believe to be very shit. But you could use heat and no life to tiger drop this boss because the tiger drop will trade but all you'll do is lose a little bit of heat you won't lose any damage and that's okay so you can just intelligently use your heat meter to tiger drop and beat this guy effectively and it would it would be pretty cool but technically you would be getting hit so i didn't want to have that in in my videos even though i in, i will straight up admit there are two bosses in this game i'm not doing the first is the bullring boss, because you have to fight a massive mob of dudes before him every single time and he's got a fucking gun and then he, and he calls buddies halfway through. Guy with a gun? Who calls more people? Really? Yes, really, Yakuza 3 gives no shits. And I'm not doing the stupid bullshit with the foreigner part 2, where you kill a bunch of guys with guns and then you fight a boss who has nothing but guns. And if you fuck up, you have to fight the guys again. I'm not doing it. I don't have the patience, nor the will, those fights are trash and you won't see them. Like, I'm surprised you saw this one, because I hated this, and uh, I need to draw a line in the sand here, guys. It's not a case of I can't do them, 
It's a case of I don't want to. And I know a lot of people say that when they can't do it, but it's true here. There are a lot of things in this life that I know I'll never be good at. I will never speak multiple languages outside of an implant because I don't have the discipline to learn them as much as I think it's awesome. I will never get 100% on The Devil Went Down to George or an expert on Guitar Hero 3 because as good as I got at that game, I don't think there exists enough time for me to focus and I don't think I'm disciplined enough to get that good. It just will never happen. But Guitar Hero Phenom did it and he's a machine and he's awesome. Good congratulations for him. But when it comes to games like this, I can definitely beat that sequence. I just don't want to, because it's not fun to me. It'd take ages, I'm not gonna lie to you folks, it'd take a, an eternity, but it's not worth it to me. I would rather fight Mine, where I can restart in a second after one mistake, than have to fight a, a bunch of scrubs before the boss who has a gun. It's just not my idea. It's the same thing with, what's his name, is it Jingo, Jingu, Bunju? I don't know his name. The wanker with the helicopter in Yakuza 1 at the end, who's got 50 million special ops people with him, and then you get to the helipod, and he's got a gun, his mates have got guns, like, I would rather suck a dick than do that fight, because I just don't think it's fun, I think it's everything wrong with Yakuza, I, I truly do, and I appreciate everyone's got their own opinions and people might love that encounter, I think it's trash, I think it has no redeeming qualities whatsoever, and I think that's a shit fight too, so fuck that fight, this fight's amazing, love this fight. Joji Fuma. So, you can do a lot of, to this guy if you know his timings, but his timings are, are pretty tricky sometimes because he's got a couple of different moves, a couple of things that are really quick like that kick. So what you'll see me do is you're going to see me bait an attack so that he does one of his multi-hitting moves, and then the multi-hitting move will have a part of it that I'm used to Kamaki parrying, and I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to proceed to combo him from behind into a bound into a heat action. That is a, a, a counter state, so throw it or use a heat action. Do not attack him when he does that, he will automatically counter you. And then take advantage of him because it's really free damage. But we're, the reason we're doing this particular move on the ground, if you don't know Yakuza, it's the only move I can do when my life is low. Additionally guys, do not expect to get full combos when he's in heat. Did you see how he auto recovered? That's because they do, they get different properties when they're in heat, which makes them way more resilient. You need to be careful because they can do all kinds of things. I would never normally risk a full combo on the back of a heat boss because they can auto-correct and counter you. It's, it's shitty. It's really frustrating. But it's in the game and you've got to understand it. It's the same with the tiger drop. When you tiger drop people in this game, they do this recovery dashing punch move. And you can tiger drop that, which leads to these wonderful tiger drop loops. But you need to be aware that it exists. So that move just then is easy to Kamaki parry, but I'm struggling here because not only am I nervous because it's, it's towards the end of the fight, but you fight the camera here. The camera's really bad. And all I want to do is have it on this guy so I can see. And I'm just not confident in doing any of these moves. That I'm confident in, but don't try and grab him then. If you grab him in heat when he goes into the counter parry, he will just counter you immediately. The counter stands, sorry. So that's why I did what I did just then. Now he's come out of heat, I'm confident again that I can do this. And then we can proceed to do some great grab moves here, hopefully. And bang his head against the stage and things. But you've already seen this fight because I put up a fail. Which was hilarious because I got that fail in the first 10 minutes of fighting him. And then it took me like 30 minutes to finally do it after that. Which I was really frustrated at because it was a simple choke. I went for a Kamaki parry and I mistimed it. I misspaced it and I didn't do it and I took a, a gut punch. And it's all it took. But here's a couple of quick swift punches to the face. Watch him as he gets up, he's in heat again. There's his standard quick combo, there's his crazy Hihachi fist that he likes to spam. I want him to do either that one, which I had trouble re This is the one that I know I can get every time, because it's just slow enough for me to know that it's coming, and it's just fast enough to make the timing easy. And now that we've got Feel the Heat, we'll go into Hell's Floor, and we'll finish him off with the uh, ridiculous ensemble of like Judo throws and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Or standard jujitsu, I suppose, because technically he's Japanese. There's the armbar. There's the triangle. Transitions into some kind of wrist control into like a... What even is that? Like a bulldog choke? I have no idea. That's kind of a mounted guillotine at the end. And then he just punches the poor old man in the face. And then afterwards we're all best friends. <laughs> standard Yakuza, right? So let me tell you a story about this recording. I had a, a, a really fun manipulation of this boss's AI. 
If you throw a jab at him and he dodges it, he will wait a second and he'll attack. You can tiger drop it. I tiger dropped it about four times in a row and destroyed this boss, but one of the tiger drops was a little bit incorrectly timed and I ended up taking heat damage, so it, technically it was a, a touch. And after this, it's the last boss, so I can't just restart, because if you restart you have to do the entire building again. So. I had to do the entire building again to get here, and again, I ended up killing him by accident when I took a hit, because it was taking him ages to kill me and I ended up comboing him to death. So I had to do the entire building three times to get back to this boss, so that I could fight him again, to get this footage that you're watching, which is the most simple boss we've fought. Bait the running attack, do dodge behind him, and attack him with a full combo into the wall, bound him, and then do heat moves. It's as simple as it gets, but guess what? Sometimes when you dodge, you'll clip against furniture and he'll kick you. Sometimes you'll dodge and he'll track with you. Sometimes you'll dodge and he won't hit you, but he'll still hit you because the game's full of shit. That is a trash fight, and the second one after it's even worse, but we skipped it. This is the final boss, Yoshitaki Mina. Or Mini, however you say it. I called him Mine for the entire game because I'm a, a dirty gaijin. But this is a great fight, but it's tough. This dude is fast ridiculously fast. He has multiple heat forms, just like Kazuma does in later games, where he can swap between them to get different movesets. He has all kinds of really awkward patterns, and the one thing to bear in mind is if you, aggra if you are aggressive against him, he'll dodge. But if you're not aggressive, he'll come to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to exploit the fact that his AI works a lot like Akira's does in the in, inside of the Colosseum. He is a counter-punching boss. So being aggressive is just too dangerous. Attacking him when he's in this is really dangerous too, so I'm going to completely avoid it. There's his flying knee, the most dangerous move he has, because it's got bullshit rubber banding. It goes, it can go full banana and still hit you that move. It's horrible. This is bad as well, because it does that spinning fist, which is incredibly fast. But the auras are, are simple. The blue one is his regen one. He's generally quite defensive in that one. His red one is his super aggressive spinning attack, running attack, dickhead move. And then his kind of like orange one is his standard aura. This fight is one mistake. You're like one second away from a mistake the entire time. And it's a long fight. It's like five minutes long. So I just didn't challenge him in heat. I appreciate it's kind of cowardly. Look at this, by the way. This is a heat action that he initiates that you get damage for beating him in. That should be every single action. I think it's silly that it's not. So when his heat is gone, I'm going to exploit the fact that he likes to dash forward, and if you're in range, he does a punch. It's just like Kamaki. Kamaki likes to dash towards you and shoulder barge. If you know how to tiger drop that, you can Kamaki parry this man for days. All you need to do is wait for him to get close. After he dashes, wait one second and then parry, and you will Kamaki parry him every time. This is his bullshit healing phase, so I'm going to put my weapons on and I'm going to do heat actions with the weapons to interrupt it. Normally I wouldn't use weapons unless the boss was a bitch, but I'm doing this because he's healing. And uh, it's the quickest way to mitigate his damage. There's the running attack. Do two dodges to get away from that. Horrible move. See the dodge? Did you see what just happened then? I had a fight with this dude where I got him down to about the 10% the of his final bar. All I needed was about one more hit. And he did the dash forward, I went to Kamaki parry it, and he went into heat mode as he dashed, and he did that uppercut, which he shouldn't have done because it should only do it in heat, but it was like a perfect autocorrect. It was horrible. It was absolutely horrible, and it of course hit me and I, and I got fucked, and I was really angry. But a couple of things you need to be aware of in this fight too. When you attack this guy and he's not near a wall, when you do a full combo from behind, he can roll out of it and recover and he can immediately hit you incredibly fast. There are times when he'll turn around when you're comboing him from behind, and there are times when he will just auto-recover for no real reason. There are a few bosses in this game that have this weird tendency to get out of your combos because of the way the connection works between your attacks and their hurt boxes, and this was one of them. So the confidence level when you're fighting Mine can be really compromised because the game just doesn't work as well as it needed to. That being said, you can still do this, guys. This is a really cool fight, but it's tense. So he goes into blue aura, I punish it with the knife. He's still in blue aura, which is kind of defensive. I'm baiting the heal right now, hoping he's going to do it, and there it was. I do the combo to get some heat, and then I get out of there and put my weapon away when I'm really vulnerable. So there's the nunchakus. You might be wondering why I don't have all the best weapons. 
I don't really like the weapons in the Yakuza games, so I've never got the best weapons outside of maybe one of them. And I don't really know how. They generally involve a lot of upgrading and, and a lot of arbitrary fetch questing for weird items and I've just never been interested. I'd prefer to do the heat moves then than the weapon stuff, so that's why I don't have all the really cool weapons. But here he is in red phase again. He's doing that spinning move that can be parried, but if you fuck up right now you've wasted four minutes of your life. And I was on this boss for a good hour, because he's not easy. But a couple of rolls. The music's great though. This is a really, really good end fight. I like this fight. And it's funny because I didn't think that the end of Yakuza 5 was all that epic. Because at the time I was just like, yeah, this is crazy. That's what Yakuza does, right? And then I played all the other games, and none of the games are as ridiculous as the end of 5. Like, there are very few moments in Yakuza that get quite as awesome as that last fight. And I've seen the final boss for Yakuza 6, and it looks fucking shit compared to 5. And 5 made all the other ones seem really tame, like this one seems super tame on the ridiculous nature of it. There's no crazy several transitions throughout the level, you know, there's no wicked acrobatics. Same with 4, where you've got tons of people fighting on the roof, that doesn't have anything ridiculous either. 5 just kind of jumps the shark in the most beautiful and ridiculous way, and I appreciate that. But here's we go smacking good old Mine who's probably one of the only Yakuza in this game who wears a suit that's even remotely close to fitting. Is it the run? Oh, that was scary. It's a scary moment. That's a scary moment too because it covers some real range. Mine's leg kick's a bitch too. He does a really fast forward moving combo and he ends it with a leg kick that goes through your guard. A lot of running away here, guys. I know it looks cowardly, but if you fought this fight, you'll know why. This boss is very dangerous and... Aggressive play is, is really effective. You can loop this boss if you don't know. You can do a loop of a throw move. Do the combo into throw, where you slam them into the ground. Then do the heat action of stepping on their face. They will have their back to you as they get up. And all you have to do is time the throw again, the combo into throw. And if you have enough heat, you can loop them. And you can keep looping him. I saw the Godfather Dictator do it when he was using the uh, War God amulet. But uh, I don't have that, so I can't use that unfortunately. There it was, there's the dash, there's the counter, there's the combo, and now we get to feel the heat. And I don't have to mash the button because we have heat, so I can headbutt him in the face and finish this uh, series off, guys. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed it anyhow. Um, I'm going to put these videos up individually so that they can be their own thing, and then this will follow at the end so you can have a kind of idea of what was happening when I was doing it. I had a lot of fun doing this game. I, I really like Yakuza 3. It's got so much fun to it, and if you've never checked it out, guys, it's super cheap. I got this game for, like, two quid, and I've had more enjoyment of this game than I have 90% of the games I've played in the last few years. So definitely pick it up, and if you liked this, I could do the same for Yakuza 4 if you fancy it, because that's another good one. And I could even do Yakuza 5, even if I hate the Haruka part. But look forward to Yakuza 0 that's going to be coming on the 20th of January, because that's going to be the next full... Ryuga Gotoku game that hits the channel. So thank you for watching, and you take care now.